Well, industrials are taking a hit today as investors digest recent manufacturing data. Our own Seema Modi has been tracking the moves and sat down with Deere's chief technology officer earlier today. So, Seema, Deere technology, I got to think autonomy. What exactly are you and they seeing out there in terms of trends? Well, I will say it's helpful to speak to management on a day where all these industrials are selling off. So we did speak to the chief technology officer, Adir, Jamie Handman, who said concerns of a recession is not stopping his team from spending more on technology. Listen in. Our ambitions are by 2030 in corn and soybeans uh, to be able to plant, uh, care for, and harvest the 10 trillion seeds that get planted every year in the U.S. fully autonomously if the farmer chooses to do so. And, and we're a lot closer to that, I think, Seema, than many people realize. Now, Deere's R&D budget is expanding to $2 billion this year, up from the last two years, with autonomous tractors and planters reducing the amount of fertilizer used. Deere is betting that these devices will become more attractive to farmers that spend about 60% of their P&L on input costs like fertilizers and herbicides. 50 autonomous tractors currently in testing across the nation, the first sale expected in 2024. But there has been this active debate around valuations, with Deere trading at 13 times, uh, pre, uh, 13 times forward earnings, a premium to its competitors like Agco and CNH, both of which have their own autonomous bets as well. Dick. So, so uh, well, Deere is very much so a part of that big kind of industrial equipment sector industry, but Caterpillar is also the top of the heap when it comes there. Can you take us through what exactly the story is around Caterpillar right now? It's one of the bigger laggards in the S&P 500 so far today. Let's just take a look at this chart. On track for its worst day since March 10th and on pace to break a six-day winning streak, there seems to be more concerns or chatter around that ISM manufacturing report, which came in at 46.3 percent in construction territory and, by the way, a three-year low. So what's the downstream effect on construction spending? We were speaking to Stephen Whiting, who you had on the show yesterday, the chief global economist at City. He does not expect construction spending to hold, on, hold at these uh, historical levels for uh, a lot longer, given that we're seeing the manufacturing uh, sector pull back. All right. That's a big concern. Seema Modi with the big trade there on Deer and Caterpillar. Thank you very much. We'll keep a close eye on that.